you notice when the re when the track reverses direction so does the uh, tread which we don't really want want to happen but again we can in the motion path we scooch down to the motion path there is also the ability to switch inverse front so we can we can tie that into the expression in here so when it checks whether it's positive or negative uh, we can add in there to say if it's positive turn off inverse front if it's negative turn on inverse front so there are ways around it but we won't we can add that in later we won't concentrate on that just now what we do need to look at though is <coughs> adding in the remaining uh, pieces of the track but it's just repeating the whole process so duplicate this track select the curve motion path attach to motion path so make sure that's left track path up reverse up attach so again that's attached to there but it's controlled by the keys and the time rather than the expression so we need to break that to remove the keys and notice this has created a new motion path motion path 2 so we need to now add this in to our expression like so and all we need to do here we go motion path 2 just change that so it's exactly the same edit the problem is they're in the same exactly the same position so we need to add in an offset value so we'll add this in as another variable so we can rather than go through and edit every piece of track individually every line down here we can just edit this one value at the top and it'll update all of them as we've built up all the tracks tread offset and I've played around with this number before so I know it's roughly 1.5 and then what we want to do is so here we want the value to be this plus the offset so we're getting the position on where it should be on the track plus the offset and we want that to be calculated first as one value <coughs> on its own so we add that into brackets and if we click edit you see you can see that is now in front and just as a demonstration change that offset to two and there we go it's further away so you get the idea with that. And we just need to continue on now, creating more. But if we were doing, um, if we if we add another one on and just add the tread offset, it's just going to put it in the same position as the second one. And there's no point adding tread offset 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. up to 40. Instead, we can just simply just say tread offset 
times 2. And that'll move it along. For, so that'll be for the third one. Tread offset times 3. And then that'll be the next one. So, as is the magic of video, I'm going to go through and add all these in exactly the same way. Just duplicate the tread, attach it to a motion path, make sure you disconnect the U value, um, and then update the expression so that on that new motion path, it's uh, it has the offset added in. Um, <clears throat> so. I'll scoop through and do that now and then uh, I'll come back and we will look at the final parts of animating these, making sure these wheels animate too and uh, anything else, tidying up some other bits and bobs so now we have the rest of the uh, sections of track attached all in the same way as you can see as we move along they work nicely we still have the issue of them flipping over but we can change that and fix it we just all we have to do is connect two attributes we need the reverse curve which will con which we have already got uh, controlled by the expression which switches the reverse on and off and then we need the motion path we'll just do it on the first one for now and all we need to do connect node state to inverse front. So what that should do Like we may have got one extra piece of track. Let's hide that one. Well, that's tread one. As you can see, that tread is no longer flipping. So we just need to go through and apply that to the rest. And with that done, we should all move over nicely. There is a slight difference with this piece of track here. That could just be down to adjusting the spacing. <coughs> 